Happy Wednesday to you. Welcome to our Wednesday liturgy. We're celebrating the Compline, the prayer at the close of the day. We're glad you're here. We hope you join us again every Wednesday for our service here at Grace, as well as Sundays. Our opening hymn today, All Praise to Thee, My God, This Night. Remembrance of our baptism, we make our beginning in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord. To sing praise to your name. your love in the morning, your truth and the close of the day. We go before a holy and a gracious and just God, confessing our sins, asking for his forgiveness. Holy and gracious God, I confess that I have sinned against you this day. Some of my sin I know, the thoughts and words and deeds all of which I am ashamed, but some is known only to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask forgiveness. Deliver and restore me that I may rest in your peace. And so by the mercy of God, we are redeemed by Jesus Christ. In him, we are forgiven. We rest now in his peace, peace he has made with God, and we rise in the morning to serve him. Amen. Our reading this evening is from James chapter 5, 1 through 20. James warns the rich, suggests patience in suffering and the prayer of faith. Come now, you rich, weep and howl for the miseries that are coming upon you. 
Your riches have rotted, your garments are moth-eaten, your gold and silver have corroded, and their corrosion will be evidence against you and will eat your flesh like fire. You've laid up treasure in the last days. Behold, the wages of the laborers who mowed your fields, which you kept back by fraud, are crying out against you, and the cities of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. You've lived on the earth in luxury and in self-indulgent. You've fattened your hearts in a day of slaughter. You've condemned and murdered the righteous person. He does not resist you. Be patient, therefore, brothers, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient about it, until it receives the early and the late rains. You also be patient. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord's at hand. Do not grumble against one another, brothers, so that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing at the very door. As an example of suffering and patience, brother, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Behold, we consider those blessed who remain steadfast. You've heard of the steadfastness of Job, and you've seen the purpose of the Lord, how the Lord is compassionate and merciful. But above all, my brothers, do not swear either by heaven or by earth or any other oath. Let your yes be yes, your no be no, so that you may not fall under condemnation. And if anyone's suffering among you, let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elder of the church. Let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another. Pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power in its working. Elijah was a man like ours, with a nature like ours, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain, and for three years and six months it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again. Heaven gave rain, and the earth bore its fruit. My brothers, if anyone among you wanders from the truth, and if someone brings him back, let him know that whoever brings back a sinner from his wandering will save his soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to our God. So we're in and finishing this evening with James chapter 5. James, we've named the apostle of faith and He's going to close with advice on the theme that contradiction between faith and behavior is at least impossible and also intolerable. So James starts by condemning those who refuse to share their wealth. The problem is not wealth because God loves to bless us. The problem is not sharing the wealth that God has given us. Two contrasts we know in the New Testament are Joseph of Arimathea, who buries Jesus, and the rich young man who rejects Jesus. The poorest among us are unsaved. They need to hear the gospel. And a rich young man represents all those who resist the gospel because of it. they see it as a financial threat, a demand, and an inconvenience as opposed to peace and freedom. So James gives us a colorful description of their plight. Your riches are rotten. Your garments are moth-eaten. Their deteriorated treasures are evidence that will condemn them on Judgment Day. The greatest example we have of sharing the wealth of God, of course, is Jesus. 
Jesus who works out our salvation by exchanging the glory of heaven for humiliation and poverty on that gruesome instrument of death, the Roman cross. So James urges patience until Jesus comes again. For now, Jesus is preaching the gospel through the church and applying the benefits of his atonement by his grace and his mercy. He will decide when the end will come, and then he will reward our patience. Two examples of note here, of course, are the farmer waiting for the mature harvest and the patience of God in the days of Noah. We wait with patience because God has purchased the harvest for himself at the cost of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And the commentary on that is the parable of the pearl at great cost. Death and resurrection of Jesus are complete. Our death and resurrection and baptism are complete. And so we wait for the return of Christ for judgment, knowing Jesus is very near at the very gates, standing at the doors. Jesus, James has another admonition. He says, be careful when you use the divine name of God. And he warns against oaths, saying, do not swear by heaven or earth. I think we all know vulgar profanity is wrong. And Jesus tells us in the Sermon of the Mount that taking an oath about our future actions are inspired by Satan. There we mistakenly assert our free will to control the future, and thereby, by taking an oath about the future, deny that God is in control as creator. Finally, James offers us a remedy for the sick and the suffering. Call the elders or pastors, and the prayer of faith will save the sick man, and the Lord will raise him up. The anointing with medicinal oil takes place in the name of Jesus, and the prayer of faith spoken by James is a repetition of Jesus' words that we see, one of which was the woman with the issue of blood. Your faith has made you well. Faith places all reliance on Jesus, and faith is always in a state of prayer. So in context, the words for saving and raising up here by Jesus are future actions. They mean the completing of our salvation and the resurrection and the outcome of God finding us righteous and innocent of all sins. So regardless of our frailties and our sicknesses and our ills, the promise of the resurrection is our healing peace wrought and bought by the atonement of our Lord. Healing, as used in James, especially here in chapter 5, is about the release of sin, and Jesus is the one who will raise us up. James ends with a warning about false doctrine, Whoever brings back a sinner from the error of his ways will save his soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. James is not about punishment. He speaks repentance, restoring the erring brother. The Greek word here that's used for the erring brother is wanderer. And that Greek word root is used for the planets in the heavens, which never stay in one place. The pastor who returns to the truth of the gospel will not only save his soul, but he will cover a multitude of sins 
with the blood of Jesus for all those who hear the true gospel. That's how James ends chapter 5, with the gospel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to our God. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands I commend my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, God of truth. Friends, we are grateful for your love, your compassion ministry here at Grace Lutheran Church. Stewardship's not a subcategory of the Christian life. Faith and tithing and finances are all inseparable. We don't get joy from storing things and increasing our inventories and building bigger barns. Joy starts with clinging to Christ who poured his life's blood out for us on the cross. The things of the world are all temporary and fleeting and belong to God. And so he expects us to manage his affairs and his things for the good of our neighbor and our gospel. May God bless you. May your tithing ministry continue to be a blessing. Your tithes and your offerings can be made via our online giving form on our website. Please fill out our online fellowship folder. Let us know you're worshiping with us. Submit your prayer requests there. All that information helps us better serve you. The Offertory. Abiding prayer. Abide with us, Lord, for it's toward evening. The day is far spent. Abide with us, with your whole church. Abide with us at the end of the day, at the end of our life, at the end of the world. Abide with us, with your grace and your goodness, with your holy word and sacraments, with your strength and blessing. Abide with us when the night of affliction and temptation comes upon us, the night of fear and despair, the night when death draws near. Abide with us and with all the faithful now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord 
and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and as forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil and the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Guide us, waking O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Lord, the almighty Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you and keep you. Amen. May you go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.